In this video, I'm going to go through the different ways that we can classify triangles. And there are basically two ways that we can classify triangles. One is by their angles, and one is by their sides. So we're going to learn some words here. You probably have heard of a lot of these words, you know, when, you, when you're talking specifically about angles. But they also, a lot of them also apply to triangles as well. So let's look at this first one, obtuse. This blue triangle right here is obtuse because it contains one obtuse angle. So if it contains one obtuse angle, that, then we call the whole triangle obtuse. And remember, obtuse means that it, the angle is bigger than 90 degrees. This triangle is acute because all three of the angles are acute. So if they're all less than 90, then this triangle itself is called acute. So not only are the angles acute, but the triangle is called acute. Notice in the obtuse triangle, uh, these angles are acute. So that only requires one of the angles to be obtuse. If more than one angle is obtuse, it won't even close to create a triangle. And lastly, we have here, this red one is a right triangle. This is probably the most common triangle to work with. Uh, because the Pythagorean theorem applies and all sorts of other awesome stuff applies. So uh, this is a right triangle because it has one right angle right here. And that's, of course, 90 degrees. So acute angles are all less than 90. Obtuse angles are all bigger than 90. And right angles are exactly 90. And again, notice that a right triangle only has one right angle. It can't have more than that. So let's go on to over here to the right, this yellow one. This triangle is called isosceles because at least two sides are the same. So when that is the case, in another video I did the isosceles triangle theorem, when that's the case, these angles right here are the same as well. Those are called base angles. And in, in an isosceles triangle, these are called the legs, and these are called the base angles right here where the arches are. So that's isosceles. This one right here is what we call an equilateral triangle. All three sides are the same. You can tell that because of the tick marks. One, one, and one means that they're all the same. That's a really special triangle. If that's the case, all the angles are the same as well, in which case we call it equiangular. So when all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same as well. They go hand in hand. If that's the case, then this triangle is also called a regular triangle, which is kind of a funny word for it, I think, because in everyday English, regular doesn't really mean all that much. If something's regular, then it's not very special. But in this case, regular triangles are very special. Uh, every angle in a regular triangle, no matter how big or small the triangle is itself, every angle is always the same, 60 degrees every time. The reason for that is because all the angles add to 180 in every triangle, and if they're all the same, you just do 180 divided by 3. This one is actually also an isosceles triangle, because look at the definition of isosceles, at least two, which means that if all three sides are the same, then these two triangles are isosceles as well. And they're also acute, if you think about it, because all three angles are less than 90. So if you're equilateral, then you're equiangular, and you're isosceles, and you're acute, and you're regular. You have five names. Let's work through some examples. I'm going to give you a triangle, and I'm going to ask you to classify it. Let's start with this one. This triangle is just a plain old triangle. There's no, there are no markings on it, no angle markings, no tick marks or anything. So we assume when that is the case we assume that, and we're not using a ruler to actually measure these, we're just going to go by the markings. We assume that this triangle is what we call scalene. All right, scalene triangles are triangles that have all different side lengths and all different angles. A lot of triangles are scalene. In this case, since I don't see any markings on them, we assume it's scalene. And it's also going to be defined by this angle right here. That angle appears to be obtuse. 
so we'll call it up too. So again, we're not using a protractor or a ruler to actually measure them. Most times you're not actually going to do that. The exercise is, is really focused on, you know, how can you identify these things just by the diagram markings? Or sometimes they'll even have like numbers on them and stuff, but you'll rarely actually be required to measure them. This one is, let's see, we have these tick marks here and here. That means that it's isosceles. And these angles are the same, right? The base angles across from the legs are congruent to each other. So it's isosceles, and it also appears to be acute. It appears that all three of those angles are less than 90. This angle, if I were to guess, is probably like 80 degrees. So it's pretty close to a right angle, but it's not quite. So we'll call it acute isosceles. That's how we would classify that one. Now this is more of like a, uh, an ACT type of question. How would you classify this triangle? I give you five different options and you need to pick which options fit this particular triangle. Again, I don't see any markings. When you don't see any markings, we assume that all sides are different. So maybe this one's like three and this one's like six and maybe this one's like five or something. They're all different. So we assume it's scalene, so it's definitely scalene. And they also appear, all the angles appear to be acute. So we'll say scalene and acute, which is 1 and 4. So I'll say that is letter F, 1 and 4. <coughs> Common wrong answer for that one would be to say that it's isosceles. It's because a lot of students always say, well, it kind of looks isosceles, and that's true. But a lot of times, you know, we, looks can be deceiving. So you have to really understand that, you know, these diagrams are not drawn to scale a lot of times. They're not going to be, you know, you, you know, if, if your teacher means for this to be uh, specific, like a specific, you know, length, he or she is going to write that down. That doesn't mean that in real life it's actually seven centimeters. All right, in this case, if you got a ruler out and measured these and got a protractor out and measured these, you're kind of missing the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is to focus on the fact that there's nothing on the triangle, no markings or anything. So when that's the case, we assume all the angles and sides are different. Let's try this one. This one has markings on it. And I'm looking at, let's see, one tick mark and one tick mark. So I know it's isosceles. This has two tick marks, which means it's different than these two. So it's isosceles. And it also appears to be acute. All three angles appear to be less than 90. So 2 and 4, that would be right here, letter D. Moving on. How would you classify this triangle? Let's zoom in on a little bit here. We've got, let's see, no markings. So I assume it's scalene. And I've got an obtuse angle right here. Scalene and obtuse, 1 and 3. And remember, obtuse triangles are going to have two acute angles. These angles are both acute, but it's that one obtuse angle that makes the whole triangle obtuse. All right, how about this one? We've got, let's see, angle markings on here. I know that all the angles are the same. When that's the case, it's equiangular. And I know that if a triangle is equiangular, this is a conditional statement, if a triangle is equiangular, the conclusion is that it is equilateral as well. So this is equilateral. All the sides are the same. And we know that in isosceles triangles, at least two sides are congruent. In this case, all three of them are, so it's isosceles. And all these angles are 60 degrees. We already talked about that, so it's acute. And the word regular applies as well, so it's all of them. Letter H. Number eight. Actually, I'm not sure if this is number eight. But it's the next one. We have three different markings. So this is also a case where it's scalene. It's specifically telling us that this is, you know, a certain length, this is a different length, and this is an even different length. They're all different. So it's scalene. And it appears to be acute. All the angles appear to be less than 90. 
And notice when I put these arches in, I like to match them up with the number of tick marks that are across. Three goes with three, two goes with two, and one goes with one. So I would say both A and D would work. It's not obtuse and it's certainly not isosceles. All right, let's do two more here and then we'll finish it up. So this one is definitely isosceles. I see two, two sides that are the same. Those are called our legs. The base is different. You can tell that because of the two tick marks. So I've got base angles that are congruent across from the legs. They all appear to be acute angles. And I would say that's it. Both A and C work. So if I were only putting one answer, I would put that. Last one. So here we obviously have a right triangle. That's pretty obvious by this little box here. And there's nothing else on the triangle. So if, the, if there are no other markings, again, we assume that it's scalene. We assume that they're all different. So maybe this is like three, and this is four, and this is five or something. <clears throat> uh, so this one will be called, let's see, scalene and right. So, like I said, this might be five or something. Uh, scalene and right is D and E. Looks like this one. That would be our sort of our best answer. So there you go. You know, eleven and a half minutes, twelve minutes on how to classify triangles. Uh, so as always, you know, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos. If you have any questions or comments, just uh, shoot them in the comments section. And uh, thanks for watching.